Hello and welcome. On the internet, you can find many different ways to grow porcini mushrooms at home. You can even buy mushroom spores and mycelium that kind of looks more like rotten sawdust. This video isn't about that, though. We're not going to expose any scammers today. If you are interested in this, though, you can check out our video called How to Grow a Lot of Porcini Mushrooms at Home. This video, however, is about how you can actually grow mushrooms. Well, they grow by themselves in nature, or do they? So for this, you're going to need several acres of old, healthy forest. The more, the merrier. You'll need some fresh, ripe mushrooms that you want to grow. And most importantly, you're going to need a good agronomist, soil scientist, mycologist, and park ranger all in one. And we found it. Let me introduce the red American squirrel, or Timiosurus hudsonicus in Latin. Who knows best how, when, and where to plant mushrooms? This red squirrel. But seriously, after spending a lot of time in the forest, we noticed this very interesting thing, and that most of the various mushrooms grow exactly where tourists like to camp and put up tents, which is contrary to logic. You're probably thinking, it shouldn't be like that. There should be more mushrooms in areas where there are fewer people. Where in reality, this is this is the opposite. We collected various belotus, honey mushrooms, celiuses right here where we set up our tent. And maybe this is due to the fact that here in Ontario, tents can be set up only on a strictly defined camping site and not anywhere else. Therefore, from year to year, people stay at these same camping sites. People bring a lot of different snacks with them cookies candies apples nuts all forest animals are well aware of this especially the squirrels which quickly get used to human food and begin looking forward to tourists they have already learned how to open bags and even plastic containers so as soon as you turn your back the squirrel will already be eating your apple or banana it can even open a plastic jar with your cereal in it and yet it seems to me that all squirrels suffer from add they can never sit still. And when they have free time from opening bags and stealing your food, they actively plant mushrooms that stay close to the campsite. We noticed this just as soon as we showed any interest in any mushroom that we found. And out of nowhere, appears a squirrel. And then the mushroom disappears. And we often find these mushrooms that had disappeared on branches of nearby trees. Very rarely did we manage to get ahead of this fast rodent. Squirrels are so fast, and they're always faster than us. It is especially interesting that the squirrel will not pick up unripe mushroom, and they wait patiently until they are fully ripe. The squirrel does not bury mushrooms in the ground like nuts. Instead, it hangs them on tree branches so that the spores of the mushroom can scatter as far down with the wind as possible. So where does it know all this from? Who, who taught it to do this? Once again, having a variety of collected mushrooms on the ground, we noticed that the squirrel is mainly interested in mycorrhizal mushrooms, and it is completely indifferent to parasitic ones. We cannot judge the edibility of a mushroom by the squirrel, of course. Red squirrels eat and they plant death caps, Amanita phalloid in Latin, and Amanita muscaria, and these are toxic to humans. The squirrel knows perfectly well which mushrooms to plant at what time and which tree to hang it on so that it is not blown away by the wind. In three to four years of its short life, the squirrel will not get to see the results of its hard labor, but without the squirrel, there will be no mushrooms, and without mushrooms, there will be no forest, and without forest, there will be no us. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any comments or questions you have below, and don't forget to subscribe.